The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Hey, guys. How y'all doing this lovely morning? Hey, buddy. What's going on, Yo, man? Buddy. Just chilling, man. Chilling. <laughs> we had a lot of, um, I'm sure you guys noticed, we had a lot of price action this week. Yeah, things were a little crazy. I wasn't I wasn't really paying close attention, but um another fun week, right? Yeah. I mean, I say we Monero as you can see was well, n- not too spectacular with anything happening, but uh in the we realm of traders and degens alike, uh, we had quite a lot happen this week. Yeah, Monero lay like, was like a stable coin this week. Everything else is going. And today it even bounced back up a little bit this morning. So, yeah. yeah. Hilarious. Well, like when nothing else moves, that's when Monero, you know. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, now that you mention it, uh, yeah, we Monero had a nice little pop here this morning and everything else is still kind of down. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at this on the daily. Yeah, big crash and then uh, green candle back to the upside. Um, I, honestly, I, I don't like this price action. Like, okay, sure, we had a bunch of, a bunch of shit coins pop off. We had the SEC um, take a little bit of uh, a hit on the nose, but... Like this, this shouldn't happen, right? We we we've got so Bitcoin, for example, here went up, and even though this is technically not an engulfing pattern, it gave back every single bit of the gains that happened yesterday or last week. Um, we could look at uh, total, and, and basically the same thing happened. And it's like, uh, is this like where's the follow through? Where's the follow through on this price action? I, that that's what I want to see. And I'm not, I'm not saying it won't come. I'm just saying that um, I, I don't I don't like the way that this price action has unfolded. I would have loved to see if yesterday, for example, had kind of maintained this spot up here. Um, so for those that don't know, the big news here was that um, the XRP trial had a big. Um, it, it's called summary jump uh, summary judgment. So it, it's kind of when the the court decides that hey, matters of facts and law are clear enough that we don't really need to. Um, to go settle all of this in court. We don't need to hash all of this out. Um, and I think there's still, and, and I think I have a slight misunderstanding of summary judgment here. I need to like brush up my, my understanding. Um, but it, it essentially places the burden of proof in one direction. So um, a lot of people, uh, I've seen so much confusion here on Twitter, and I feel like it's probably a good opportunity to address it right here. Um, what is a security, right? Is XRP a security? A lot of people um, we're like, no, that's not what the SEC said. They, they, they said that, uh, you know, there, there was sales of securities and, and they did say that. Um, so let's like take a step back maybe and, and say, okay, what's a security? A security is an investment contract. And you have to realize that an investment contract is kind of a bit of an abstraction, right? An investment contract says, okay, I'm going to, one person is going to give, uh, give money or consideration, uh, as it's called in the law. And another party is going to make promises to deliver um, on some kind of like value exchange here where they're going to make, um, they promise to, through their managerial efforts, to improve the value of the thing that the person is holding. Now, the thing could be all kinds of things. It could be orange groves in uh, in Florida, <laughs> aka Howie. Um, it could be an XRP token. Now, the important thing that the judge said, and one of the first things the judge said in um, Judge Torres in her ruling was that. The XRP ledger, XRP as a token, is not necessarily a security, okay? Now, it, it's it's not that she says, like, like she basically said, okay, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a security, and it's not about the network. It's not about the token. The token might represent the abstraction of an investment contract, okay? But that doesn't make the XRP ledger or the token itself the security. And I, I've seen a lot of this on Twitter where people are like, well, how it's, but it's not a security if you sell it this way, but it, it is a security if you sell it this way. Yes. The difference is whether or not you have made some kind of exchange of a contract. So what the judge ruled is that the initial um, sort of the, um, the non-programmatic sales, the, the sales to institutional investors, where Ripple as a company said, hey, we're going to sell you this token. This token uh, is a representation of value. Through our managerial efforts, we're going to improve the value of this token. And, and here's what we're going to do. We're accepting your money um, to, to try and do that, right? To, to try and execute on the value improvement of this token. Um, that 
is an investment contract, right? That's even if you didn't write it down on paper and sign it in blood or whatever, like that's still a, that's still that's still a, a sort of a promise of managerial effort to improve the value of the token that they sold those people. Now, if those same people go out and they sell their own tokens on a secondary market, that's not necessarily an investment contract between Ripple, the company, and anyone else that buys it. Um, and so that was sort of the second thing, or maybe the third thing that the judge ruled. So first of all, XRP is not necessarily um, an investment contract, right? A, a token, like as the network itself, it's not an, it's not a security. It's not an investment contract in and of itself. It's about the exchange and the way that the exchange was made. So the initial institutional investors, that was the next thing, um, did uh, make an exchange of securities, right? XRP, or sorry, Ripple did sell securities to the institutional investors that they made promises to. But then the programmatics, they called it programmatic sales. So it's kind of like they were on exchanges and they were just like, you know, selling liquidity into the market. Um, they didn't know who the buyers were and the buyers didn't know who the seller was either. So it's like, how can you say that, that a contract exists when there's sellers that don't even know who the buyer is? Or sorry, when there's buyers that don't even know who the seller is? So that's kind of like, that was the big news. That was like the, the thing that motivated the pump was that the judge said XRP is not in and of itself a security. Yes, they sold some investment contracts to um, institutional investors, but the programmatic buyers on exchanges didn't even know a lot of times that they were buying. In fact, almost all the time, didn't know that they were buying directly from Ripple. Now, one little nuance that happened here was that the judge, <clears throat> the judge also said, I'm not saying this, uh, Judge Torres said, I'm not saying that secondary sales are not securities. That's not before the court. That matter, I can't rule on it because it's not here before the court. But she made some comparisons that were like that if it was before the court, you you have a pretty good idea of how she would have ruled on that. Um, so anyways, that that's the big news. That's why everything pumped. You saw shit coins pop off. Um, that's kind of one thing that um, uh, that we talked about that. You know, we, we could see shit coins pop off here. It, it makes some sense to to potentially expect that. Yeah. Personally, well, I think I you should. to be most interesting about it is it effectively had the opposite effect on what the SEC is supposed to be achieving. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to protect investors. Yeah, you know, you um, just had all these people aping into Ripple and like a hundred other scam tokens because of this. Those, news. those it was like. Gens. I can't believe them. Right. <laughs> like, so it, it accomplished nothing. Like, <laughs> Looks in the mirror. <laughs> right. It just got people to do what the SEC, you know, supposedly doesn't want people to do. Right. Is like, I mean, sh make shitty investments. Not going to lie. I, I saw the news drop within about 30 minutes. Um, got up a little bit late that day. But as soon as I got up, I was like, oh shit, I missed it. And then I was like, wait, this only happened 30 minutes ago. 10x long. <laughs> 10X uh, yeah, long of course. Of course. Long, yeah. I'm saying that's that's the irony of all, the, all this, right? Like, so what, what did they achieve? Like, the, um, their, their mandate is to protect investors, right? And basically, uh, you know, prevent people from getting scammed at the end of the day. That's like, like essentially what the purpose is, right? It's like, yeah, people, people are too dumb to to make to make smart decisions on their own. So we got to protect investors. I'm not saying I, I agree with this, but that, that's like what, what their mandate is. And effectively, they they cause the opposite effect. I guess if we look at the spirit of the law, um, yeah, that, that would be true. If we looked at the letter of the law, their their purpose is to protect people um, from those who would make promises of delivery on investment contracts. <laughs> that would be the purpose of the SEC to, to, to make sure that people offering investment contracts and promises of, um, you know, of managerial effort, um, make certain disclosures. Uh, yeah, so trying to protect people against fraud, right. And trying to protect people against, shit. well, they're, they're trying to protect people against one kind of fraud. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I mean, if I want to put on my legal hat here and I want to like try and defend the sec, which I really don't want to do, but you know, let, let, like if we were to really come at it from like a, well, you know, actually, or technically or whatever, you would say that the sec is there to protect people, um, in investment contracts. So, mm, I mean, if you're going to buy and sell and speculate on baseball cards, like the sec can't help you, right? There's nothing they can there's nothing the SEC can do if you're going to buy and speculate on, on baseball cards or gold and silver or, or really commodities or any asset that's not technically an investment contract. But under the spirit of the law, I mean, 100 percent. Yeah, like <laughs> all that all that happened here. Um, right. That, that's also because you, you can't it's not as easy to 
you could do a lot more damage with securities, you know, contracts than baseball cards in terms of duping people and the, you know, the the the, the stock exchange has the ability to, to 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 pull in a lot more money and do a lot more damage, right? People just just running scams and creating fake, you know, fake companies, penny stocks. I mean, look, look at like. Like BitConnect is a, is a great example, right? BitConnect. Say like BitConnect is good for society, right? And if you could if you could press an ethical button to make it go away, uh, it, it, you, you know I, I would probably press that button to, to help the world, right? Uh, but then you know the libertarian to me is like you know let people do whatever the hell they want to do, um, but the the purpose of the sec would be to prevent something like a bit connect from existing right from allowing people to ape into just some complete and utter scam that destroys people right yeah yeah you might um one thing about the sec that or, or g generally like any any government agency is that it's hard for them to prevent anything the, the like the best they can do is after the fact be like no that was that was bad we're gonna you know Take your money and throw you in jail but imagine if if the sec like went after a whole bunch of people in 2021 during the bull market and and then uh everyone would blame them like oh you stopped the bull market it should have gone higher and you even you you see this with bitcoin, bitcoin maximalists they'd be like they, they, they find these reasons they'd be like oh well it it was supposed to go higher but insert reason and uh, and everything crashed um and i i actually i did the same thing in 2018 um, I blame the B cashers for my losses. You know, it's like, you know, I, I made all this money and, you know, it was amazing. And then it went down. I was like, ah, it was the B cashers fault because they, they, they split the network and, and uh, we should be higher. And, you know, I was just trying to, I was, I was externalizing the blame for um, my failure to, to sell the top and, and also to not recognize um, how we even got to 20 K in the first place in 2017. Like that was, yeah, that was a significant component of fraud there. Um, and like, I don't know, just pumpage and, and obviously like hype and exuberance, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're hundred percent right. Like the SEC allegedly exists to prevent this kind of stuff. <laughs> and, just, and then yesterday it just went crazy. Of it. Like bill, billions of dollars went in the wrong direction. <laughs> like, oh, whoops. It's, it's just, I mean, which is why, you know, libertarian to me shows like how useless it is. And like, really, what does it do at the end of the day? I mean, it just creates regulatory capture right it ends up just helping out you know those that are able to uh, you know large companies that are able to afford attorneys and whatnot and and deal with the regulations and deal with the sec and hurts the little man and, and ends up hurting the small investors at the end of the day right uh the individuals uh it ends up punishing them more than more than helping them at the end of the day what what really would would help people right is, is information people getting you know, quote unquote, correct information and uh, having access to as much information as possible so they can make good decisions on their own uh, and just yeah. give people access and let them do whatever the hell they want to do. Uh, I have this like this libertarian fantasy where the SEC is not a like a prosecutory agency. They're just an information agency. And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we we looked at this coin. We looked at that coin. We looked at this and this and that. And here's all the information. And we're, we're just going to publicly publish everything that we found. And Right. Um, we so, think these guys like that would be amazing. I think people could make far better decisions if the SEC was just like not a not a regulatory like oh we're gonna take you to court and mess you up like but we're just gonna tell you what we think like that would be so much better. And so I mean conclusion too right like the story's not over. People people took this as news that in many cases coins like Ripple will not be considered a security. But that's not necessarily we're not there yet. I mean, that, that can change on a dime. Right. This is just it was essentially it was part of this case. It wasn't really the, the essence of what this case was about. And people are, are extrapol are extracting it as law from this case. Uh, but, you know, other there's going to be there's going to be other cases. There's going to be you know, this this isn't like the the. This isn't the law to rule the land right now in the U.S. Uh, I'd say by any means. I don't think, right? I don't. I don't think people could take it to the bank that this now means that, uh, you know, something like Ripple in most instances is not considered a security. I don't think um, we're there yet. That's a pretty big question or pretty pretty big topic to unwrap. Yeah. Um, so, 
show. This was summary judgment, right? So summary judgment is not like an official ruling on the case. And even if it was an official ruling on the case, you would have an appeal. You might even have the opportunity to appeal the appeal to the Supreme Court. And that's usually, you know, that's usually what happens. Um, however, there have been other rulings. So, for example, the um, uh, what was the telegram? Was it TON? T-O-N? I can't remember the name of the token, but um, there have been other rulings where judges have said a digital token is not in and of itself a security. What you need is an, you need the consideration given by one party in exchange for the promises of managerial effort. So um, a, a Ripple token in this case, for example, might represent an investment contract. And this is kind of the abstraction that I think people maybe have a little bit of a hard time with. The thing that's regulated by the SEC, the security, the quote unquote security, is the investment contract and it's an abstraction, right? It, it, it depends on like, did you make promises and what kind of like consideration was given and who are the parties and what are the circumstances and the facts surrounding everything that happened, et cetera, um, which could make a token, a digital token, a representation of, uh, of an investment contract, but that doesn't make it the investment contract itself. We have seen other rulings um, come down from courts where the court has said, um, no, this is, and I'm pretty sure it was the telegram case, um, where they said, no, the, the token itself is not the security that the security was the thing that was exchanged, the abstraction that was exchanged, the promises, um, and the token might represent that security, but it's not the security itself. And in terms of like how the law works and in terms of just like basic logic, I think that this ruling that, that has just happened, the summary judgment from Ripple, we should expect to continue to see this kind of thing play out. Like, okay, the, the, the fat lady hasn't sung. We could, you know, maybe the Supreme Court says something else, right? Maybe they say all, all digital tokens are securities, including Bitcoin and Monero, right? I doubt that will happen. But, um, you know, we, we haven't like really seen like the final, final, final ruling on, on this. But I do think that um, to me, the law in that paradigm is very clear. When I put on my legal hat, when I think in that in that paradigm, it's very clear that not all digital tokens are securities. Ethereum as a network is probably not a security. And that was probably like, um, it, what's funny is like this kind of ruling has already happened in the past and people just like, they, it wasn't a big deal because that wasn't like the headliner, you know, SEC attack, whereas, whereas Ripple was. Um, but I mean, I, I do think that, that we should expect this trend to continue. I, I don't think that what happened um, two days ago is is not, I don't think it's any like big um, significant um, revelation, right? It's it's not something like, oh my God, wow, we had no idea. Like this is what we should have expected the judge to rule. I think within that paradigm, um, the judge made a correct ruling. I expect it to stand um, in, uh, in, in in appellate courts. There maybe is a little bit of, of wiggle room here because – the judge didn't rule on secondary market sales. The judge ruled on the programmatic sales. So Ripple was apparently, and this was news to me, so I, I had to learn a little bit here. Ripple was making programmatic sales of its token on exchanges, um, but they were basically like a market maker, right? They they were they they would put orders up, you know, and people would fill those orders, um, and, and so. They were like programmatic sales, but they didn't know who the counterparty was. That was the broker, the exchange that managed all that. And so the judge said, because l listen, if you were the person buying that ripple, you didn't know who was selling it. And thus you didn't, you had no idea whether or not you were giving money directly to the managerial efforts of ripple to, to make your token go up. You were just trading. You were like speculatively, you know, buying a thing and you can buy all kinds of things speculatively that are not investment contracts that are not securities. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of like the that my my personal um, take on on what's happening there. Uh, in front of us here, we have the Ripple chart, and um, this is one of the things that I use that I've told you guys about since forever. Um, these blue lines represent uh, standard deviations, and you can kind of see there's like a cluster, a big cluster of standard deviations. We're on the daily chart, so this is kind of long time frames, um, and basically it kind of gives you this range where you might expect a, a top to happen. So um, I kind of like, I told you, I, you know, I made a little DJ in play just because, eh, you know, why not? Um, so I kind of rode this thing up to the lower edge of the bands here and then got out. Uh, but, it, you know, it still had a lot more to go. But um, 
this is something I call wave magic because uh, it's kind of wavy, looks cool, and it gives you like these sort of almost magical levels sometimes about uh, about what's happening. Um, so, anyways, I right now, guys, if you're if you're a trader, don't expect to to be hitting another like you know two x gain here on Ripple. Um, this is going to be a hard stopping point for now. Um, and I mean, it's it's a pretty big range. Oops, uh, it's a pretty big range. So, like, let's let's take a look here. That's thirty five percent, right? So, there's the possibility if you're a DJ and trader that you could like operate in this range of 35% for, for a while. Um, but for ripple to go higher, like it, it's, it's got to stop and consolidate before it like decides to just like take off to the upside. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, I, I don't, I wouldn't guess we have too many DJ traders here, <laughs> you know, watching the podcast, but Hey, just in case. Um, yeah. I don't think that's really our, uh, audience, but I'm sure there's, there's a few. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh well uh, so i mean uh, what are you gonna do like we're sitting here flat 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 on monero and uh and then ripple decides to go 2x b cash goes 3x it's like okay well maybe i'll punt a little bit yeah i mean i guess that's maybe that's just me but uh no yeah go out there and have fun by all means anybody that has the uh you know the 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 mindset for it right um do it yeah that's stressful but if you can do it more power to you just be aware of the risk, you know. <laughs> Probably gonna lose all your money. <laughs> <laughs> just be prepared. Just be prepared to lose. <laughs> like body, like you. I mean, you you pay close fucking attention to this shit. Obviously, you're studying this stuff all the time, right? I mean, I'm sure your advice is like, don't really dabble in this and and start placing bets unless you're really playing paying close attention, right? Because things things move so fast right yeah yeah i mean if you're if you're the average joe what you need to do is position for the months long time frame to years long time frame um you don't want to be like even when you're watching the markets it's so easy to miss like a little thing um like for example last year when uh when elon musk was like okay i'm gonna settle we're gonna drop the case i'm gonna buy twitter sorry you know whatever let, let, let's let's just like move this thing on um, for whatever reason, my brain didn't process. I wasn't like, oh yeah, that means Doge will go up. Um, and so then Doge pumps like, like a hundred percent, uh, whereas everything else was still flat and almost down. And then everything crashed right before like the ultimate washout. And, uh, later a friend of mine, uh, you know, a, a trader friend of mine is like, oh yeah, yeah. I got into Doge. I was like, bro, why didn't you share that information with us? You know, with the group, this is why we have this group here. Uh, so that we can share these kinds of information. And, and he's like, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't think about it. Um, so it, it's just it's so easy to miss something. It's so easy to be like, like to to just not think of uh, of an idea, um, even if you're watching it all the time. Um, and then there's the stress, you know, like, oh, OK, I'm in a position that's leverage. Maybe I'll get liquidated. I, I need to watch the market and see how this thing develops. Like you're, you're like for almost everybody that your best bet is, first of all, DCA and HODL. Right. Obviously. Um, and if you want to trade, and I do recommend actually that people pay attention to the markets and try and get on the right side of big macro trends that are going to develop over like the next year or so, um, you know, for example, like 2021, sell the top, right? Like at least take some profit, take your initial investment off the table times two, um, and then like, wait, like, don't be buying all the way down, wait until the, the conditions turn around. Um, but I mean, yeah, hundred percent, like with what you said, like, uh, you know, you, you've got to watch the thing like all the time and, and things can change. Um, and maybe that's just like personally my style. Other people have like very algorithmic kind of styles where they where they just like they get in under certain conditions and, and then they exit under other conditions. And it's like, you know, they're they're not like it's 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 not that they have to watch it every time and all the time. It's they, they've got their like their stop loss to take profit. It's very algorithmic in nature. And, and OK, like if you want to do that, you know, a lot of people make money doing that. Um, it can be difficult. But um, yeah, I mean, overall. Uh, don't trade, guys. <laughs> I am proud to say I did make money on Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah, nice. the only the only shit coin I made money on. I probably <laughs> lost more overall, though. I will say. I mean, I, yeah, I it, it's fun. It's, it's, fun. it's fun to trade, and obviously, when you win, it you know it, it that's what pulls you in. But it, it becomes a major time sink then too. You know, it's oh like, yeah, it's, it's like you have to make money on it. Yeah, and then you know, uh, six months later, you're like shit. What have I done? And then it's like, you know, how much do you, do you have more or less than what you started with? Because not only did you potentially not make money, you also wasted a shit ton of your time, you know? So you, you just got to be cognizant of these things before you, before you start. I can't paying. even, I can't oh, even no. tell you like how poignant that is. Like, it, it's kind of like poker. Um, I lived in Vegas for a few years and uh, 
not to go play poker, but because I was there, I was like, yeah, I go play some poker. And at some point there, I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I'm just staring at cards over and over again. Like what a waste of time. And I'm not going to lie. Like I feel a little bit the same about the markets, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at all these charts and, um, been trying to live out in the, in the real world a little bit more the past few months. And, uh, you know, kind of take my own advice and just sort of position for the longer time frame. But uh, I mean, bro, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So just be, be aware of those choices as you as you make them, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, man. one more thing. Let's cover the Dixie. If we, you know, um, that was kind of an important. Um, so I, I still am like leery that that the potential for a top could be in progress here. I don't like when I see the entire market get extremely bullish and everyone is like super happy and then we get like this stupid price action um for example on bitcoin here where it's like flat 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 you know almost kind of like a bart chart pretends like it's going to break out and then you know slams back down at the downside i don't like that like i said i'm not calling i'm not i'm not top calling just yet um but one thing we've talked a lot about here is the dixie and um uh, last week we had we had talked about like okay well we don't i don't expect this this to break here just yet but i you know i kind of expected some ranging and then maybe this is going to break out here the violence of this move to the downside um, on on the news of um, of the inflation. Uh, so the inflation numbers came out on Wednesday this week, and uh, actually, like things things really dropped. The CPI is now at two point nine seven percent. Like that's that's in trend. That's in trend with the past two decades of just like hyper financialization, number go up kind of bullshit. Um, the uh, the orange here is uh, again the core inflation, which is minus uh, food and energy. It's a little bit more sticky, but it also took a nice big drop. Like this thing just like went from 5% down to, um, what is that? 4.8. Um, sorry, not 5%, 5.3% down to 4.8. So it dropped by half a percent. Um, we still need to see the core inflation drop down a little bit, but effectively what I think happened is when these numbers came out and there was also like the non-farm payrolls, which I don't really follow that much, but apparently it's kind of a big deal. The dollar index just like cratered, like this thing's like fell off a cliff, right? And what we're looking at here is a decade long trend line. Um, you can see that breaking down this trend line here uh, was oops, was basically the bull market um, of 2020, right? That right there. So 2020, 2021, the dollar index dropping low signaled the bull market uh, that was like happening. And so this decades long trend line has, has just been broken and the week just closed below it. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, I really didn't. So. Um, in kind of real time early this week, I had to sort of reevaluate um, what I was thinking about, um, you know, what like what's happening here and, and whether or not there's more uh, juice to be squeezed from crypto and stocks. Um, stocks took a big, you know, pump. Uh, we had talked about sort of this like this line right here and then things just went up. So, um, again, like Doug, you were talking about, you, you know, you look at this thing all the time. You got to be watching it all the time. And if you're not, you could miss something. And um like this week was a perfect example of, of exactly that because early this week when the Dixie um, just cratered on, on the numbers uh, on the non-farm payrolls, I had to start saying to myself, hmm, maybe, maybe my thesis of potentially a top here is uh, a little bit premature. And so I, I basically had to like reverse um, that thesis. Now, I didn't have any positions that were necessarily based on that, but if you're a trader, like you, you have to be very nimble and very quick to be like, nope, I was wrong. Like <laughs> one, one of the hardest things, you know, for crypto bros to do is be like, nope, I was wrong. Uh, but a trader, like you, you have to do that. Like you have to always keep your mind open to the potential that, that your thesis might be wrong. And so like the stock market pumped and the Dixie crashed and this, like the violence of this crash really makes me reconsider whether or not, um, we are near a top things could continue going here. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, like this candle here that happened in the past days, like that's not good price action. Let's go down to the four hour, but like this shit shouldn't happen. Like we should break out. There should be follow through. In fact, before the ripple ruling, there should have already been follow through. This thing should be up, uh, up here. Like we should be above this level right here. Like, so the fact things crash down here, maybe it's just like market makers scrolling with the market and they're going to be like, ha ha, no, just kidding. And then go up, right? Who knows? But I just don't like the way this price action looks. Nevertheless, we've got like kind of these other signs that, um, you know, we just, we just have to pay attention to the stock market is continuing to go up. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of like the, the report here today on, on, uh, on what's going on. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully it was a little bit educational for, for people on securities and, and investment contracts. Um, like we always say, don't be a trader, <laughs> stop trading. You Somebody, know, uh, somebody's asking about, uh, our power chain. 
Oh god. Okay. You want, you want to pull that up and give you give your assessment? Ooh. <laughs> I will. Uh, let's see. A R R R U S D T. We definitely have some R fans in the in the house at all times here in Minerotopia. Let's see. I guess Q coin. Probably Q coin would be the one. Hmm. R made a whole two. Oh, that was that's the one. I want to go to the daily. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh... <laughs> is it time to go? About this yeah, it's all I think it's about to two or three x. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's see. If we were to, if R was about to two x, that would be <laughs> right here. <laughs> what What is the market cap of R? Um, I don't know. It's it can't be good. Like, let's. I guess we can take a look here. Uh, yeah. Coin market cap. The the place that I would say not to go to. Yeah, why? Yeah, why, why do you advise against Coin Market Cap? Um, it's owned by Binance, and they lie, and they they okay. like they list certain. They'll take coins that are like in the top hundred, and they'll be like, "No, we don't like that coin," and they'll put it down on like page three or something. Scumbags. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it also is owned by CZ, so pirate chain number four forty eight at a uh, a market cap of mm, thirty six million. Oh my oh. god, yeah. guys. <laughs> Wow. It, for the, for the guy asking about our um bro bro like you can't expect this coin to do anything um i mean you've probably lost everything like if you held r from the top like there's almost like right. you, you might as well kind of probably be holding. another pump but expect that you know there'll be another dump it's not gonna ever you know it's not long term you're you're we're not gonna be using r I mean, ninety I percent mean, was mined within three years on ASICs. Like, there are not, there's no organic market that that got into R early. Not, not like Monero. Not even like Bitcoin. Not even like Ethereum. Like, yeah, okay, they had the pre mine, but they sold most of it. Uh, maybe they sold it to their friends and did some like trickery on the back end that we couldn't see. Who knows? But um, at least you could still mine it with a GPU for for years and years. Like R is like, like they 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 mined all of it like almost immediately on ASICs and. I just can't understand like why uh, other than playing this market for, you know, degen pump gains, like why would you, why would you hold this coin? You're just enriching some asshole somewhere. Agreed. It's good advice for people out there that are curious about R. Just, just be careful. Looks like it got uh, a 10% pump recently. Amazing. So, body overall, man. So, so, do you think this this ripple thing is kicking off a you know a new kind of like bullish market for for the for the quote unquote alts? Um, alt season. I think that that kind of sort of um, maybe we could take a look at dominance to get an overview of that. So, there's Bitcoin. Uh, here's the dominance. Let's clear all the colorful stuff. I mean, Bitcoin dominance uh, has taken a nice little drop here. Uh, kind of hit that 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 level fifty two point two five there. Um, to to answer your question directly, um, kind of, <laughs> we um, there's the opportunity for alts to pop off a few at a time, and this is something I posted um, a couple weeks ago on Twitter. Expect alts to continue popping off a handful at a time. Some alts like Ripple and I think Ada maybe um, and like the ones particularly that were like, is it a security? Is it not a security? We don't know. Oh my God, you know, uncertainty. Those coins did pretty well, but other alts did not do well. I personally, you know, again, I see the action here on Bitcoin. It's not, there's no follow through there on Bitcoin. Um, you see the action on the overall crypto market. There's no follow through. You're seeing a few coins pump one at a time or like maybe like four or five, 10 at a time, whatever. Um, but you're not seeing like broad positivity follow through on the market. And that, to me, like, I don't like the way that looks. I, I don't, that doesn't signal strength to me. Things need to pump broadly, like overall, like the whole crypto market needs to go up um, with the stock market, which by the way is pumping um, to, to like sort of convince me that, that like there's a real move here. Otherwise, it, it just seems to me like um, slushing funds around, right? You've got like market makers, you've got exchanges and CZ or whoever. Um, slushing funds between one coin to the next coin from Bcash to, okay, you know, Bcash wasn't a security, you know, and then it got added by EDX and pump that shit 3X and oh, well, now, now, now we have the Ripple ruling. Okay, we'll slush those funds into, into Ripple and, um, you know, try and dump as much coin as we can on the plebs that are exuberant about, about the ruling. Like, maybe that's not what's happening here, but um, I always remain suspicious when I don't see, like, the, 
the overall broad follow through the like the big picture um, macro view that says okay everything is good everything's pumping everything is like uh, you know set for for gains for a number go up um, I don't necessarily see that across the whole market um, but I mean the setup is there like it, it could still happen right I'm not saying it's not going to happen but um, I'm just I'm just slightly suspicious so for me personally it's like okay if I got some shit coins as they pump I will take profit um, but you know I'm. I don't. I don't think necessarily that that this ruling is going to drive the next bull market in crypto. That's that's not really where my where my thinking is at here on this. All right, man. Good stuff. Anything anything else you want to put out there? Um, I do think that uh, as like a larger picture, that regulatory clarity will drive the next bull market. In fact, I think that's like the main thing that will drive. Uh, obviously, liquidity and you know printing of money, et cetera, that, that will also drive the next bull market. But the, the narrative that's going to emerge, I believe, in, in the next year or so is um, as we see more rulings like this, um, that's that's going to like enable corporations like uh, BlackRock or whoever to put money into crypto and the regulatory clarity is what's going to actually drive the real bull market. I'm just not convinced that this is it. So um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Good assessment as always, awesome. buddy. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for keeping an eye on the markets so we don't have to. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, Anon, Anon Mon, time is better spent building businesses rather than trading the markets. I, per Fact. I personally agree with that. Um, or like we said, you know, if you're going to do the trading, then you gotta, you know, you gotta dedicate, you get, you get just cognizant of what you're doing. Cause at the end of the day, the most valuable asset is your time, right? So you want to make sure you, you spent it well. Yep. You only get one shot at this guys. I don't know if you want to spend it just looking at pirate chain all day <laughs> and hoping that it goes up uh thank you so much buddy um all right stick, stick around if you can obviously yeah for sure all right cool